Trilogies is an essay written by Beatrice Colomina and a few other scholars from Princeton, GSD, and Yale. Um, they, it, she's a Spanish architect, historian, and theorist, and she's also um, uh, from the Graduate School of Architecture at Princeton University. Um, vacation today uh, by studying educational experiments in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. At the Venice Biennale, um, they present some uh, photos and text and uh, interviews um, to show what happened in 68. And in France, basically, it's not only in school of architect schools of architecture, it's um, also in other uh, universities and kind of schools where they, um, they shut down the schools, um, not only the students, but also the teacher. Because basically, if we take the example of architecture, what they were teaching was not at all corresponding to the reality. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, in the morning, they were at school of architecture, learning uh, the classical way of uh, art and architecture, les beaux, uh, les beaux arts, etc. Et and, um, and in the afternoon, most of architectural students, they were actually um, working in uh, their um, teacher's office doing contemporary architecture. So there was this, this huge gap between what they were learning at school and what they were producing at that time. Um, yeah, it was like a, a time of defiance, that's what she said. And then all of the things happening, the social political shifts happening, yeah. like related to the Italian thinking of spreading out to different European countries and the riots in France that you just mentioned, and then the Vietnam War, the Cold War, all of these things sort of coming together at a moment in time where this revolt is sort of right. added to the revolt. So it was this idea of bringing all these different subjects that aren't yeah. used in architecture. Yeah. So a lot of them, for example, in GST, mm -hmm. with uh, like Walter Gropius, um, bringing in, like you were mentioning, engineering, mm -hmm. and then bringing in other disciplines together, philosophy, mm -hmm. um, sociology, uh, to become part of the curriculums, mm -hmm. uh, instead of just using the classical as the sort of base thing. Basically, your teacher was mastering a teacher, yeah. and you had to follow him and, and learn what he was uh, teaching. Yeah. Today, it's not the same. Like um, You are able to have your own uh, thinking. Well, you know, what is radical? Yeah. What does it mean? And, um, and actually, Edison said that one of the ways he looks at radical is something that you don't Something that's being done that isn't being done anywhere else. Uh, that's something that can be radical, but then at the same time, you can ask the question like the Notre Dame School and yeah. in America, uh, they're doing something that is uh, that not everyone else is doing, but it's classical architecture. Mm -hmm. and nobody else is really doing it. And does that make them radical? So radical could be something that nobody else did before, or something like nobody does anymore. Like, yeah, it's all about the context, yeah. I think another element for being radical from the 70s and until today is the internationalization. Um, like you invite um, teachers from all over the world and obviously you make some um, encounters between uh, different students, between different countries. This is something that seems pretty normal today, but I think it was not really the norm before the 70s. Mm. When we look at the website that she has for radical pedagogies, it has you know, the world map showing where the lectures have been done, where the exhibitions have been done. And you see Germany, you see like France, you see Italy, you see uh, Spain, the United, but States. the United States, even South America. Then you don't see places like China, you don't see places like uh, India. And these are the places that are sort of looking towards, like, for architecture towards these countries that the exhibitions are actually happening in. So if, if some sort of radical pedagogy is to happen, uh, you know, why are they being placed in the same places? Why aren't they being 
done and, and right. other places. But I think it's because people who worked on this exhibition and, and topic, they're, they're not from those countries like China, India, or other right. yeah. yeah. They are PhD students and teachers from uh, North South America and Europe. Yeah. And so that reflects their interest in their, uh, yeah, where, yeah. They're, where, where they're from, basically. Yeah. But what they're building in China, you know, because they're building really, really, really quick, or even in India, like we have a boom. Yeah. And, and so how do you teach in the architecture school? Uh, because what you're building is way, uh, I mean, it's, it's going very quick in those countries at least. So it would be interesting for them to see uh, what kind of field we, we, I mean, have been introduced in the 60s and 70s, and then what could be the evolution of schools of architecture, well, not only in these countries, but in, in Europe and America, um, to face the challenges of, of, of today and, uh, the, and the new paradigms. So what she was talking about was the students questioning now has sort of plateaued. Yeah. It has become part of the curriculum where, it, like, uh, a few people said that it's kind of like a checkbox now. Like, if you question uh, as part of the studio environment or whatever class you start questioning things, you're sort of looked at as a participating. You're participating yeah, in the class. True. And once the class is over, the class is over, you get your grade. And that's yes. participating. But before it was more of actually, it had more physicality to it. But, but it's so interesting, it's true that today in every uh, class you have, I don't know, 25%, even 50% of your grade based on participation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good point. But what you're saying is that at the end of the day, you, have, you still have students and teachers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's, still, it's still like... Um, Someone's still teaching us, and, yeah. and it's something, and, and they're telling us what to do. Um, and even the grade is based off of that, of like yeah. how much you like listen to the teachers and right. or done what they sort of asked. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and in and, and many ways, there it's sort of impossible to have radical things where it's just uh, yeah. students teaching. Yeah, it's, it's like the same frame, not necessarily the same curricula, obviously as as before the seventies, but. It's the same frame. Uh, the question is now, if there is another radical thing happening, what is it going to be that we're revolting against? Is it right. the current way we're being taught now? Or maybe against the parametric, if it becomes a norm? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of students now that are going against parametric saying it's yeah. just it's just geometry, and it's just, uh, right, it's just, yeah, uh, beauty. Yeah, and uh, I, think, I think the parametric is a good example, because basically <laughs> what's happening is that you compose a building or an, an architecture, yeah. and it doesn't make any sense. And I think radical pedagogies and this, what they did in the 60s and 70s, were about being meaningful. And when it's not meaningful, uh, well, you need to be radical. Yeah. To try to understand that. I think I think if you stop meaningful anymore, uh, it means that there is a gap, a huge gap between what we what we teach, what we learn, and what we build, basically. <coughs> so it could be just uh, meaningless.